just a quick video showing you, again, some things that you can do in Google Sheets as you develop models. The first thing that you are always going to want to do is you're going to want to be able to select all of your data by doing Command A or clicking and dragging for you to sort data. And we can do sorting data by data, sort range, data has had a row, and then you can select the variable and whether you want it to go from biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest. I'm going to do biggest to smallest. Um, so then once you have that, you can start creating scatter plots. So maybe you want to create a scatter plot of mass and radius. So you can go to insert chart and once you do that, you're going to want to make sure that you pick a scatter plot. And you should be able to pretty quickly be able to develop a scatter plot. And once you do that, you can add things like a trend line. And you can add things like a show R squared value. Those two things will help you develop your model. And you can also change things like the type of trend line. And what you're looking for is, is my R squared value getting better or worse with the different types of trend lines? Once you have your scatter plot developed in your model, you can start looking at data points that don't quite fit. So if I'm looking at trying to make a prediction for the radius of a star with the mass of maybe two or three, it's going to be pretty hard based on my scale to see what exactly it might be. It might be 10, 20, 30. I'm not really sure. So that's where you can start deleting data points in order to get rid of different data. So I'm going to get rid of 2 and 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7. And these are all high mass stars. Notice I'm just deleting the entire row of data. And suddenly you might start seeing ooh, different trends. Now these stars up here are significantly larger in terms of the radius based on their mass than this grouping of stars. So I can then start looking at other qualities or traits of stars to figure out is this star with a solar radius of 78 really something that belongs in my model. So I can go to Rigel. Rigel has a Wikipedia page and Rigel I can find out if I look might be a much larger star than the Sun. So if I'm trying to develop a model based on stars that are um, like our sun, I might delete this row as well. And boom, I might start being able to develop a bigger model. So as you get rid of stars, you really want to think about in your computations, what are you getting rid of? What are you sorting? How are you deleting them? And what's your justification for that? The other thing that you can start doing is maybe you're starting to make a prediction for star's um, radius with a solar mass of 2. So I'm going to right now quickly, right now, go and find all of the stars that are near 2. So I'm going to say 2.49 all the way to about 1.72. These are the stars that are like my star. So I'm just going to highlight them in red. And I'm going to find the average mass of all of these stars. So I'm going to do equals average. And boom. Average is 2.11. So I'm going to find out what the average radius is for all of these stars. What is their average? It's 13.91, so that gives me a good estimate also for thinking about what my average radius might be. If I look at the average of 2, it's right above 10, so I might have made a prediction based on my trend line that maybe a star with a solar mass of 2 would have a radius of 10. And because 
my average of these stars that I have data on is slightly over 2, and the corresponding radius is 13.9, maybe I could be in the ballpark of that estimate. I hope these things have helped. If you need more help with your models, just let me know.